After spending six days hiking around Montana, we have headed east to our 26th state, South Dakota. With national parks, lots of wildlife, waterfalls, cool small towns, presidents, unique roadside attractions, beautiful nature, and so much more, South Dakota is a breathtaking, diverse, and fun place to explore. And this week, we are partnering with South Dakota Tourism to show you all the best hikes, things to do, places to see, and delicious food to eat all across the state. We're excited to bring you all along as we experience it all for the first time. Welcome to South Dakota. We are so pumped to be here in South Dakota. To be honest, we did not know much about South Dakota until we started researching a few months ago. And similar to our experience in Idaho, it just seems like such an underrated state with so many beautiful and fun things to do. We are starting our South Dakota road trip in the western part of the state near a town called Spearfish, which is known for the Spearfish Canyon National Scenic Byway, <laughs> which is where today's adventure begins. Our first stop in Spearfish Canyon is this spot called the Devil's Bathtub, which looks like this really cool little swimming hole with a natural water slide, kind of like the one that we filmed behind my parents' house during our time in Austin quarantining, but it looks quite a bit cooler. <laughs> we hear that the trail is about a mile each way, and we also hear that you just have to cross a bunch of streams and rivers and creeks, so we're gonna here get we wet. Go. <laughs> This trail has been a little confusing so far. We've crossed the stream maybe five or six times and there's times where you don't know whether you're supposed to cross it or keep going on the same side. It's kind of one of those choose your own adventure kind of trails it seems like and right now is one of those times where we don't know if we're supposed to keep going or cross the stream. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I think we made it to the devil's bathtub. It's really cool. There's like three different tiers. There's multiple slides, but I, and we couldn't tell at first which one you go down, but I think we know which one it is. It's like the steeper and like kind of smoothest looking of the three. This one looks a bit cooler than the one in your parents' backyard, <laughs> but I think we're gonna give this, uh, this slide a try. I'm kind of nervous I'm gonna bust my butt <laughs> on a rock or something, but you know, gotta go for it. I mean, we came at sunrise, which it's definitely not warm and not nope. swimming weather, nope. but we hear it gets really busy here and we wanted to beat the crowd. So it's gonna be a little cold, but I think we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're not big daredevils, so I'm a little nervous about this. I don't know, it looks fun, but I just, just don't know what to expect. And we've seen lots of videos of like little kids going down it, adults going down it, so we're about 99% confident that this is a pretty normal, safe thing to do. <laughs> oh, it's cold. Oh. Woo. Okay, I'm getting in this thing. Oh, 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 oh. it's so cold. Oh, man. Woo. This slide is a blast. The worst part is we're here at 7.20 in the morning and it's, it's freaking cold. <laughs> the thing I was worried about was where the slide meets the water. I just didn't want there to be a rock jamming up, you know, but it only it's only maybe waist high. There's nothing there, so. You didn't go that fast. Yeah, you don't go that fast on it, but maybe if you push yourself off a little bit, maybe you'll go a little quicker. All right, it's my turn. Kind of nervous about this. I've never done anything like this before. Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ah! Oh my, my pants fell down. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's smooth, but there are some kind of rocks, and your pants might fall down. Just warning. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best parts is I took some photos of Adam going down the slide and when he's like hitting the water, his face is like. <laughs> it's so funny. We're headed back to the van. If you can, come early. It'll be really cold, but you'll most likely have it all to yourself. Like we mentioned earlier, we are on the Spearfish Canyon National Scenic Byway. It's a beautiful area with a river running through it and some stops to see some waterfalls and some hikes. So we're gonna drive around and see what we can find. So there are three waterfalls that we're gonna stop at in Spearfish Canyon, and the first one is Spearfish Falls. And from the sign, it says it's about 1.5 miles and it's moderate difficulty, and it looks really cool. We're gonna hope we're here uh, mid to late August, so the water flow may not be awesome, but the photos we see, it looks like it can be really, really pretty. like different waterfalls all together. It's so pretty. That was a great first stop on our waterfall tour. It's a quick and easy hike. It's relatively flat and it felt less than a mile and a half to us, but it's a great payoff at the end. And next up, we're gonna drive a little bit up the road to hike to Rough Lock Falls. With Rough Lock Falls, you have two options. There's a trailhead that's about a mile, or you can keep going down the dirt road and just park, and we think you can just walk right up to it, but we're about to find out. We haven't even made it out of the parking lot yet, but there's a stream that you walk along, and the water is so freaking clear. Also, we are loving how green it is in Spearfish Canyon. There's just tons of green trees, but then there's, there's all these like tan, cool rock structures just kind of jutting out. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. So it turns out there is a little bit of a trek to be able to see the falls, but it's a nice paved pathway like this, so it's not too bad. There are so many waterfalls. There's like 50 of them, just tons of different streams. There's this kind of shorter, but tons of stream section right here. And then in the back, there's a taller waterfall. I don't know if you can see it, it's a bit more narrow, but dang. I was not expecting this stop to be this cool. And for waterfall stop number three, we're at Bridal Veil Falls, which is actually just a little overlook on the side of the road, so it's super quick and easy. Okay, we lied. So there's the boardwalk here you can get a view of, but you can also walk down below the boardwalk, cross the little stream, and get to the base of it. So from the road, this waterfall is definitely not as flowing as the other ones we saw today, but we're so glad we saw people walking up to it because you can literally stand, stand on the waterfall and touch the water and have the row, oh God, of rocks. Warning, if you're gonna stand right by the waterfall, just keep an eye out above you because there were some rocks that started falling over the edge and almost hit us. It was a little scary, but we are okay. 
But what I was saying is that it's really cool that you can walk right up to the waterfall. You can touch the water, touch the rocks. It's just, I don't know. I can't think of a time that we've gotten that close to a waterfall. Normally you have to stay behind a barrier. So that was really cool. So now that we've cheated death and used one of our nine lives, the only way to celebrate, get ice cream. <laughs> All right, we made it to downtown Spearfish to Leon's Creamery to get ourselves some ice cream. So I got strawberries and cream, and then on the bottom is chocolate, peanut, no, peanut butter and chocolate M&Ms. Yeah, and I got the same peanut butter M&Ms, and then I got chocolate, chocolate chip. They sounded like they'd be really good together. Yeah, and as you can see, mine came in a special little container here. <laughs> a gluten-free cone with chocolate dip, oh, of course. Oh, I'm so jealous. I didn't know that coming in, so. It looks so good. <laughs> So this place is like a cute little, well, they don't have the inside open right now. You yeah. order at the window, but it looks like a really cute place. It's like kind of tucked into this like really historic looking building mm -hmm. just in the middle of downtown. They change their flavors all the time. They have eight flavors and they basically just swap out whatever ones sell out. So the peanut M&M one is a new one. It wasn't on the yeah, menu like a day in, ago. Yeah, I came in wanting a certain flavor. We showed up, they didn't have it. <laughs> I was a little disappointed, but strawberries and cream sounded good. And so did the peanut butter chocolate M&M, &M, which is the new one that I didn't know coming in so oh, I'm pumped for it. It's gonna be real good. Yeah. Oh my god. I was hoping it was peanut butter ice cream. It and is. I'm nine yeah. Oh I my got gosh. A taste. Peanut butter ice cream is probably one of my favorite ice creams of all time. Peanut butter or caramel. Oh and it has the crunch of the M&Ms. Y'all know we like our chunky mm -hmm. ice creams. <laughs> Ooh. It's good. It's nice mm. and got a pop of the strawberry but it's also creamy too. It has a little obviously. bit of crunch from the seeds. That's really good. Oh, yeah? mm. That's really good strawberry ice cream. Mm. I shall feed you chocolate, chocolate chip. <laughs> They're all super creamy, delicious, smooth, yeah. nice and ice cold. Of course. They have some interesting flavors as well, like avocado yeah. and Earl. No, yeah, London Fog. London Fog. Yeah. So yeah, this place is incredible. Yeah. Super good after a morning at the Canyon. Yeah. Just 20 minutes up the road is the historic town of Deadwood, which was established in 1876 after gold was discovered here, which led to the Black Hills Gold Rush. Tons of people flooded the town and it was known for its lawlessness. And the city has now been designated a National Historic Landmark District for its preservation of the Gold Rush era architecture. So we're gonna wander around and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. We love us a good theme town, and I guess this technically is not a theme town because it's mostly the original architecture, but wow, this is probably the coolest town we've ever been in. The architecture is just very historic and beautiful and unique, and it feels like we've either stepped back in time or stepped onto a movie set. Oh man, it is awesome. Do these buffs make us look like bandits? Stick them up, <laughs> One of the more popular things to do in Deadwood is to come to the Mount Moriah Cemetery. Not only does it have beautiful views of the city and the hills surrounding it, but it's the final resting place of a few famous residents. The two most famous people buried here are Wild Bill and Calamity Jane. Wild Bill was a lawman and a gunslinger who moved here in 1876 in pursuit of his true passion, which was gambling. He was down the hill in the saloon where he was playing poker and he was shot and killed to death by Jack McCall. Yep, that's by correct. Jack McCall, <laughs> we actually walked by where he was shot and then where they arrested the guy. Yeah. So crazy, and he was eventually buried at this cemetery. 
So a little bit about Calamity Jane, and I didn't memorize my facts, so I'm gonna read off the brochure they gave <laughs> us. But she was known for her boisterous lifestyle, and she had varied occupations, like a cook and a laundress, woman of the night, a bullwhacker, and she also was a storyteller in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. So she came to Deadwood in 1876, and she apparently acquired a reputation as a notorious alcoholic. Um, she died in 1903, and her dying wish was to be buried next to Wild Bill. It's rumored they were lovers, but it's also said that maybe it wasn't reciprocated. She loved Bill, he didn't love her back, so she wanted to be buried next to him. But some, I read online, I don't know if it's true, that some people think maybe it was a prank by his friends to get them buried next to each other since he didn't love her. I don't know. But it's interesting, and here they are at the <laughs> Mount Moriah Cemetery, buried together forever. We forgot to mention that it costs $2 per person to enter the cemetery, but I think it's free for kids and it's totally worth the cost. Not only are the views from the cemetery beautiful of the city and the hills and mountains around, but the cemetery itself is gorgeous. It has these really tall, super pretty trees and it was really fun to get to learn some history of the Deadwood area. But we are rolling out of the cemetery because we have one more sweet adventure here in Deadwood. We haven't met our sugar quota for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and we were told by our patron Trevor to come to this place called Chubby Chocolate. Chubby Chipmunk. Chubby Chipmunk Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> so, it's cute, they have Alvin and the Chipmunks outside. So we got a couple little treats here. Oh yeah. I think they're known for their truffles, but Adam got something well, mine has, very- there's a truffle in there. Oh, Adam's is intense. See, this little thing is not gonna do it for me. <laughs> I have to go for the bigger items. Ah! Hey. Adam's motto is go big or go home. Yeah, buddy. So I got the devil went down to Georgia. He found a spicy caramel patty topped with a hot mama truffle and smothered with <laughs> spicy dark chocolate. I don't think that goes to the tune of no, the song. No, it didn't, very but well. I tried. I tried to say it as fast as I could. <laughs> but yeah, there's dark chocolate on the bottom. There's uh, it says homemade caramel, spicy caramel. And then there's a truffle smushed on top of there. It has glitter on it. Yeah, the truffle that is in there is supposed to have 66% cocoa and then I think like five or six hot peppers in it or something. So that's definitely gonna be a oh hot mama. Oh my goodness. I asked the woman working there what was the most popular truffle and she said the chipmunk treasure, which is a milk chocolate center with toffee, praline, and coconut. Mm. Like my favorite things mm. ever. Uh, dipped in dark chocolate and topped with almonds and toffee. Boom, boom. It looks really good. Shall we try? Say chipmunk treasure five times fast. Chipmunk treasure, chipmunk treasure, chipmunk treasure, chipmunk treasure, chipmunk treasure. You did it, wow. <laughs> Mine dominates yours. <laughs> Boom. Whoa, <laughs> I haven't even fully tasted it. It's so good. Oh my God. The inside has this um, really soft milk chocolate and like a gooey, I guess praline goo. Oh wow. This is delicious. The, the caramel is nice and like chewy and stringy and good. I haven't gotten much spice yet, but I'm sure it's in there. We're gonna get to it eventually. I was expecting a lot more heat, kind of like the, the the chocolate covered peppers we had in Santa Fe. So I don't, I don't really see much heat, so I'm kind of let down on that, but otherwise, it's freaking delicious. This is, this is awesome, it's heaven. I took a bite of Adam's and I definitely felt the heat in my throat, but maybe I'm just a wimp. That chocolate was delicious. Thank you so much, Trevor, for telling us to go there. But man, we are in a sugar coma now. <laughs> We've had way too many sweets today, so we're gonna head to our campground and just relax for the rest of the day. <laughs> we're kind of campground hopping during this trip, but the first two nights we are staying at Grizzly Creek Primitive Campground, which is near Custer State Park. But it's been an amazing first day here yeah. in South Dakota. We kind of knew what to expect from researching, but it's honestly just blown us away so far. Yeah, I'm still thinking about Spearfish Canyon, like the canyon walls and the river running through it and just the lushness is absolutely beautiful. So beautiful. But we are gonna rest up the rest of the day because we have another big adventure tomorrow with some very familiar faces. <laughs>